Good morning, people of God. Peace and blessings unto you from uh, Jesus Christ, uh, our Savior. Uh, we are so pleased that God has allowed us to assemble uh, together once more uh, in his name. Uh, peace and blessings uh, be unto uh, you. Uh, good morning, Canaan family, and for all of you that may be watching uh, anywhere from around uh, the world. Uh, as I mentioned, we're grateful that God has placed it on your heart for you to get up this early morning uh, and to uh, come and hear what God has to say uh, to us today. And so because God has been so uh, good to us, uh, let us now look to him uh, for his blessing. God, our Father, it's in the blessed name of your Son, Jesus, that we come grateful for yet another day that only you could make and yet another opportunity uh, to strive to love you more and to serve you better. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for health and strength, and we pray for uh, all of us uh, who may be uh, suffering from one malady or another. Uh, we pray, Lord, even for those who have uh, bid goodbye uh, to uh, loved ones. Uh, we thank you, Lord, uh, for your uh, lesson as it's about to uh, go forth, uh, that it might not uh, return void, but accomplish uh, the purpose uh, for which you are sending it out. And so, uh, Lord, we pray that all that we do and say uh, would not come short of bringing you glory, uh, for it's in the blessed name of your Son, Jesus, who, yes, is the Christ. We do pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Uh, our lesson uh, for today is entitled, uh, Freedom from Sin, uh, taken from the... Uh, New Testament uh, doctrinal uh, book, uh, uh, the Romans, a uh, letter to the church at Rome, written by the Apostle uh, Paul, um, uh, verses uh, 1 through 14 in chapter uh, 6. Uh, this uh, book was uh, written while uh, Paul was at Corinth, uh, somewhere around uh, A.D. 57. Uh, you, uh, if you're paying attention, you uh, are hearing uh, that I'm saying A.D. before the number because A.D. is Latin for uh, Anno Domine, which is uh, in the year of uh, our Lord. Um, and uh, so it's not correct to say 57 A.D. It's uh, more correct to say uh, A.D. 57. Uh, and while Paul uh, wrote it uh, from, uh, from Corinth, uh, he had yet to uh, go to Rome, as was his uh, desire. And he sent um, this uh, letter uh, by the only woman uh, in Scripture that's mentioned uh, uh, as a servant or a deacon. Um, if you certainly uh, read the account in Acts of the seven uh, men, uh, who were first uh, chosen, um, this one uh, Phoebe uh, was uh, uh, doing the same, uh, the same task. Uh, and so she is the uh, first uh, deacon uh, woman mentioned in uh, scripture. Uh, you can certainly read in 16th uh, chapter of the uh, book of uh, Romans, uh, verses one and two when Paul uh, mentions uh, her. Uh, of course, Paul later eventually got to Rome after a couple of uh, trials. Uh, it was his desire to be uh, tried uh, by Caesar, but he was martyred in uh, A.D. Uh, 64. Uh, of course, we are still in the uh, uh, second month in the uh, Hebrew uh, calendar, uh, the month of uh, Lyar or uh, Ziv, uh, running from mid-April to mid-May. So another few weeks uh, in, uh, in this month. Uh, what I'm going to do prior to reading the uh, lesson of uh, Scripture in the sixth uh, chapter, I'm going to uh, begin uh, in the, uh, uh, the fifth uh, chapter uh, 
by uh, starting with verse uh, 12 because it's a prelude to uh, what Paul is uh, answering uh, and questioning, uh, if you will, um, in the uh, sixth uh, chapter. Uh, one of the uh, best loved um, uh, verses of scripture by me and countless others, uh, I'm sure, uh, is in the uh, eighth uh, verse of the uh, fifth chapter. Uh, where Paul uh, writes, uh, but God commended his, his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died uh, for us. Uh, parenthetically, God is not uh, waiting for you to get cleaned up uh, before coming to him. He wants you to uh, come in the state in which you are and give your life uh, to him. Uh, so beginning with uh, uh, verse 12 in the fifth uh, chapter. Uh, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For unto the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam, to Moses, uh, about a span of 2,500 years, uh, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. And of course, uh, we uh, know from our Bible uh, study in the book of uh, Genesis uh, that Adam disobeyed uh, God and ate from the uh, tree of uh, the knowledge of good and uh, evil. Um, and of course, um, as I said, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him uh, that was uh, to come. Uh, the first Adam uh, was the original of man's uh, natural and earthly being. Uh, the second Adam, referring to uh, uh, God's son Jesus, um, of his spiritual and heavenly. By the first, sin and death came into the world. Uh, by the second, Adam, uh, righteousness and life. Uh, verse 15, but not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ hath abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus the Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Our lesson of scripture, uh, chapter 6, verses 1 through 14. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For 
if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God, as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Last verse uh, 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Certainly, uh, our reading uh, indicates uh, to us uh, how much uh, God uh, loved us, uh, even uh, that while we were dead in our sins, uh, he provided a way uh, for us to have a relationship with him uh, by uh, putting all of the sins of uh, mankind upon his son, uh, Jesus, who gave his life uh, on the cross, but of course, uh, he was uh, raised uh, to life uh, new, and uh, we who are in uh, Christ Jesus, uh, while uh, we certainly uh, are dead uh, to sin, in other words, we are no longer slaves to sin, which we talked about even uh, last week uh, in, our, uh, in our lesson, uh, the freedom in uh, Christ Jesus, um, uh, Paul certainly uh, begins uh, by making sure uh, that we understand that even though our sin has been uh, forgiven, um, we need to not uh, cheapen uh, what it was that, uh, that God actually did, uh, that uh, even though we know our sins uh, can be uh, forgiven, um, if we uh, but ask uh, uh, God, First uh, John uh, 1 and 9 tells us that if we confess our sins, that he's faithful uh, and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, that while we know that we can ask for forgiveness of sins, that should not give us a license uh, to sin. We should not lit, uh, sin uh, indiscriminately knowing uh, that our sins uh, can be uh, forgiven. Uh, the death of Jesus uh, resonates for all eternity uh, for the believer and should compel us to respond as such. In other words, we should try our best to live as God wants us to live. Uh, and when we, in fact, uh, mess up a little bit and uh, do sin, uh, we can uh, ask God uh, for forgiveness, uh, knowing that uh, we are sinning because we are still in our uh, human uh, bodies um, and we are living in a sinful, uh, fallen uh, world, uh, getting worse day by day. Certainly, if you read uh, what's going on uh, anywhere in the world, uh, that certainly is uh, evident uh, to you. Um, but we uh, don't want to uh, do less than our very best uh, to live as God uh, wants us uh, to live. Um, <clears throat> now, of course, uh, while Scripture tells us that the uh, wages or the payment uh, for sin is, uh, is death, um, 
But the gift of God is eternal life. Uh, we sinful creatures could not pay for uh, not only our own sin, but we certainly couldn't pay for uh, anyone else's. Uh, it was only the sinless uh, Son of God who came in, in the flesh and the person of Jesus Christ, who by dying uh, on the cross and was uh, temporarily separated uh, from God the Father and uh, God the Holy Spirit because he had all of the sins of mankind on him. Um, uh, it was only by that uh, death and then, of course, subsequent uh, burial and resurrection. Uh, and we who put our faith in that what Jesus did paid the sin debt that we owe uh, God because the sin of Adam is imputed to every human being uh, born uh, since then, um, uh, we know uh, that we don't have to uh, continue uh, living in sin, and we should act as though we are grateful uh, that God loved us enough uh, that Jesus uh, died uh, in our behalf uh, and paid uh, for the sin uh, that we uh, owed. Uh, though forgiven, the believer will constantly need to evaluate their behavior and impulses to ensure that they keep short accounts in the event that they do sin. Uh, we cannot return to life as usual after identifying with Christ, and Paul wants to make that abundantly clear. Now, there's a further uh, question that... Uh, uh, Paul uh, asks us, he says, uh, aren't you aware of uh, how much uh, the death of Jesus uh, means for you? Um, and so because of, of that uh, uh, solidarity within this community was evident by the strong bonds uh, that were uh, signaled in the act of uh, baptism uh, as the participant now identifies with his community of Christ's uh, followers. Uh, because uh, of uh, Jesus' uh, uh, resurrection, um, uh, certainly we remember uh, the account of uh, Jesus uh, going uh, to uh, John the uh, baptizer to be uh, baptized. Uh, not baptized because he had sin, um, but it was an example uh, for us, uh, certainly uh, as Jesus came uh, out of uh, the water, a dove like a uh, like the spirit uh, lit on his shoulder and a voice from heaven uh, it came uh, that was able to be heard uh, God uh, said this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased such that all three persons of the Godhead were present at the baptism of Jesus so we uh, especially as uh, Baptists um, follow that example that uh, Jesus uh, gave once we have uh, yielded our life and confessed our sins uh, uh, to God and, and offer our uh, repentance um, to, uh, to live unto him uh, and believe that Jesus' death, uh, burial, and resurrection uh, was uh, acceptable to God on our behalf, uh, we submit to uh, water baptism, uh, which of course signifies the death, burial, and uh, resurrection. Uh, unlike some uh, that uh, teach uh, that baptism uh, uh, pays for uh, sin, um, that's not what the scripture uh, teaches. Um, and uh, so uh, we just submit to baptism because of the example, as I said, because it signifies the death, burial, and resurrection uh, of, uh, of Jesus. Um, certainly if we have not submitted ourselves uh, to God, um, we can go down into the water uh, a sinner, but you're going to come up a wet sinner, uh, as we like to uh, say around here, uh, if in fact uh, what has not taken place upon your heart uh, was uh, pleasing uh, to God. Um, and so uh, because we have uh, we were actually uh, buried with him in baptism in which you were also uh, raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. Uh, 
Consequently, we cannot return to any form of life as usual because we are dead and buried. We no longer have to sin. We are not in a ongoing sinful state as we were before we gave our lives uh, to God through uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, so we don't have to sin. Uh, we will sin occasionally, as I mentioned, because we are uh, in uh, human uh, bodies, um, uh, but we need to try to do our best uh, to uh, show God how grateful we are uh, that he loved us so much that he sent Jesus to die uh, on our behalf. Uh, and so uh, Christ's uh, work on the cross uh, substituted his righteousness for our sinfulness. Um, but in addition uh, to that, um, uh, we who are in uh, Christ Jesus um, have been uh, ushered from the old uh, humanity into a new uh, and richer and more fulfilling uh, messianic uh, humanity. Uh, as I mentioned, the uh, metaphor of baptism in these verses uh, uh, suggests that the uh, dramatic uh, outworking of Christ's three-day uh, interment was not only symbolic, uh, it was also inclusive of those who would believe on him, uh, not just for that time, but for all uh, time. Um, we uh, make sure that we uh, do our best, as I said, um, to show God how grateful uh, we are uh, that we no longer have to uh, live and be dead uh, in our sins. Uh, and so in the, uh, the fifth uh, verse, um, Paul continues uh, to tell us uh, uh, about the state uh, that we are now in. Uh, because of what uh, uh, Jesus uh, uh, has, uh, has done. Uh, that if we have been uh, planted, in other words, literally uh, united, born together with, uh, together suggests that there is symmetry between our existence and our new bodily identity in Christ. And such a uh, partnership and uh, gathering uh, will be heightened as the subsequent uh, uh, clause uh, suggests. We shall also uh, be in the likeness, in other words, the, uh, the figure uh, of, uh, of his uh, resurrection. Uh, but of course, such a promise is contingent upon our appraisal of Christ's death in order that we might be animated by his uh, resurrection. We ought to be uh, urge uh, to, uh, to do the best we can and to live uh, a uh, life uh, which would uh, be a reflection of the righteousness uh, that we now have in uh, Christ Jesus. We have no righteousness in and of ourselves. Um, Isaiah tells us that our righteousness uh, would be as, uh, as filthy uh, rags. Um, we only have the uh, right to, to, uh, to have a relationship with the Holy God uh, because our sin has been uh, paid for. Uh, and so we want to make sure um, that we do all that we can, I keep saying, um, to show God how grateful um, that we are, that he uh, loved us and that we should love him um, in return. Uh, for what he has uh, done uh, for us. Uh, and verse uh, 6 goes so far as to refer to um, our uh, fallen uh, state as uh, though it was an old uh, man uh, which was actually uh, crucified, uh, that the body of sin uh, might, of course, be uh, destroyed. Paul elaborates upon the effect of Jesus' sacrifice so that the early church community could understand uh, what an ideal response to uh, should resemble. Um, in order for us to appreciate the new existence that Christ has called us to, uh, we must see ourselves the way God did 
uh, in our old uh, Adamic uh, nature as, uh, as dead and operative and no longer uh, calling the shots in our lives. Uh, and of course, uh, when the scriptures are read in unison with each other, uh, we can gather the broad themes and theological import that caused them to speak with one voice. Uh, this verse uh, that Paul uh, writes, uh, it captures the theological outworking of a right way to view the crucifixion. And of course, it should prompt us to leave the bondage of sin behind. Remember, our lesson is entitled Freedom in Freedom from Sin. Um, and of course, in the seventh uh, verse, uh, Paul's, uh, uh, Paul tells us um, that, uh, that he that is dead is uh, freed uh, from sin. In other words, even though we are uh, freed uh, from sin, freed from the bondage of sin in that we would have to sin because we were in a sinful state, uh, we are no longer uh, in that category. As I keep mentioning, uh, we, because we are still living uh, in our human uh, bodies and we are living in a world uh, that is uh, uh, fallen and, uh, as I keep saying, getting worse uh, day by day, um, uh, we don't have to uh, sin. Uh, we can certainly allow uh, God ongoing basis to have a greater and greater control uh, over our lives. Uh, he has given us uh, his Holy Spirit who has taken residence uh, within us. If we but listen to what God is uh, saying uh, to us, uh, then there is uh, less chance of us doing uh, those things uh, that are displeasing uh, to God. And of course, uh, verse 8 tells us that since now we are uh, dead with Christ, and they're talking about the, uh, the death that Jesus experienced that paid for our sins, um, the fact that he was raised uh, from the dead, uh, we are now uh, alive uh, with him. Um, and, and so um, that the... Um, that the death of Christ provides uh, entry into an external existence with him. Uh, and Paul makes it uh, clear uh, that belief is absolutely uh, necessary for entry into this life uh, with Christ. Uh, and of course, uh, we are trying to uh, make sure um, that we understand uh, what um, having a life uh, in Jesus uh, means uh, that we are no longer, as I keep saying, bound uh, to sin. Um, we will continue to sin occasionally, uh, but it ought not be willful uh, transgression. Uh, we ought not to be thinking about how to uh, sin. Uh, we ought to uh, be thinking only about how we can live that would please uh, God uh, the Father for what he has uh, done. Uh, verse 9 uh, continues uh, by telling us um, that uh, since uh, Christ was raised from the dead, does not die anymore. Uh, and of course, death has no more uh, dominion uh, over him. Um, uh, Jesus uh, overcame uh, death, obviously, uh, because uh, he did not remain uh, dead. Um, that um, he was uh, raised, uh, he, it was a bodily uh, resurrection. There are those that, uh, that don't believe that Jesus was raised uh, bodily, um, that uh, he somehow may have uh, manufactured a uh, body upon occasion when he appeared to those uh, that he encountered after the, uh, the resurrection. Uh, but scripture tells us that uh, there was absolutely nothing uh, in uh, Joseph of Arimathea's uh, tomb uh, but the uh, linen uh, uh, burial uh, cloths 
um, that surrounded the body of Jesus. But Jesus appeared uh, to uh, somewhere around uh, 500 people over the course of uh, a short time after he was, uh, he was raised uh, from the dead. Um, uh, and, and, and so um, we look forward to the day when we will have a glorified body like unto uh, uh, Jesus when he comes back uh, for, his, uh, for his church, we who are part of the church universal. Um, uh, we're people everywhere uh, throughout time, uh, even those who, uh, who died uh, in Christ or were looking forward um, and believe the Old Testament uh, scriptures um, were, are going to be raised from their uh, graves. And then, of course, scripture tells us that we who are alive uh, will be caught up with him uh, in, in the air. Um, and so uh, uh, knowing uh, that uh, death has no longer a, uh, a dominion over us as well, um, that should compel us to enjoy a type of uh, freedom uh, that removes the fear of death. Uh, we know that sometimes uh, when people uh, know that they are uh, about to uh, die, uh, that there is great fear uh, on them, sometimes evident in their uh, faces as uh, their uh, soul leaves the, uh, leaves the body. Uh, but we who are in Christ knowing what our ultimate uh, destination is, uh, should not fear uh, uh, going to uh, meet our Lord. Uh, scripture tells us that uh, absent uh, from the body uh, is uh, to be present uh, with the Lord. So even before uh, Jesus comes back for his church, if a believer uh, should uh, leave uh, this world uh, by way of uh, death, um, that that spirit uh, that was that came from uh, heaven and inhabited our bodies is going to return, but ultimately be reunited uh, with a body uh, like unto uh, Jesus uh, that was flesh and bone. Um, certainly, uh, we have a body that not only is flesh and bone, but as uh, it contains uh, blood because the life uh, is in the blood. Um, uh, our glorified bodies uh, will not uh, uh, have such, but will be flesh and bone as uh, is uh, Jesus' body that he uh, still has. Scripture tells us that he is sitting at the right hand of God the Father on high, making intercession uh, for us. Uh, verse uh, 10, um, uh, Paul uh, tells us that the uh, that the death of Jesus uh, had essentially a cleansing uh, effect upon the, uh, the world. Um, and even though this was a one-time uh, event, uh, it had everyday uh, implications. Um, we know that his uh, uh, post-resurrection life uh, continues uh, uh, with us in the church universal, as I uh, mentioned, and that uh, Jesus um, is uh, the post-death life that Jesus now enjoys is uh, uniquely equipped physically and spiritually to lead others uh, to God. Uh, we believers uh, benefit from the life that Christ lives unto God, not only in an ultimate sense, bringing believers to heaven, but also in an immediate uh, sense, uh, making sure that we are assured uh, that we are uh, united uh, in, in Christ uh, and that we have the uh, means uh, with the help of the Holy Spirit um, to throw off our old nature, which has uh, predisposed uh, to sin and to make sure that we live uh, unto our new existence uh, in Christ. Uh, verse uh, 11, um, I'll just read that uh, quickly. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, and of course, dying uh, to sin uh, means that it no longer maintain 
maintains its uh, grip uh, on us. As I keep mentioning uh, that we are not uh, in bondage uh, to sin as we uh, once were. Um, and of course, uh, to be uh, in Christ um, is to be in, uh, in direct uh, union uh, with him. Uh, it's uh, necessary to see uh, that dying to sin and living unto God um, is uh, certainly part of the uh, appraisal process for believers to live uh, the Christian life that God wants us to live. God knows that we by ourselves, uh, even we who have confessed uh, Christ, uh, cannot live the Christian life uh, by ourselves. And so he has given us uh, his, uh, his help prior to uh, the uh, the death of uh, Jesus, he uh, told his disciples that he needed to uh, go away uh, and that if he didn't go away, then the comforter uh, wouldn't uh, come. Uh, and God uh, knew that it wasn't necessary for both Jesus and uh, God the Holy Spirit to be here well, at the same time. Uh, but if you read the beginning account of the uh, book of uh, Acts, uh, it tells us the, about the, uh, the birth of the uh, Church Universal, uh, the day of Pentecost in which the Holy Spirit uh, came uh, to, uh, to, in a permanent kind of way, to live uh, within the earthly bodies of we who have uh, confessed uh, Christ. Uh, and so what we need to do is just allow God to uh, lead us and uh, guide us then there's less chance for us to uh, sin. Uh, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that ye should obey it in the lust uh, thereof. Uh, we must do all that we can to eradicate the sin uh, from our lives. We ought not to put ourselves in situations uh, that uh, would uh, increase our chances uh, to sin. We need to watch uh, with whom we uh, congregate. Uh, we need to uh, make sure that we guard our minds uh, from uh, all of the things that uh, uh, permeate the airwaves and uh, uh, through television and through uh, print media, uh, and even in uh, television. Uh, we need to be very uh, careful about what we allow our minds um, to uh, rest uh, upon. Uh, certainly, as I mentioned, we live in a fallen uh, world, but we need not uh, fall uh, prey uh, to, uh, to uh, everything that goes on around us and sit. Uh, being in union with Christ is to adopt a new way of living. Uh, it is a life wherein our normal lusts are not entertained, acted upon, or obeyed. Uh, they are cast uh, adrift. Of course, as I mentioned, with the aid uh, and assistance of God, uh, the Holy Spirit, um, and we want to make sure that uh, uh, that the meaning of uh, the atonement death of Jesus on the cross uh, incites a new mode of existence uh, in us. Uh, and then Paul cautions us in uh, verse uh, 13 um, that we do not allow uh, our uh, body parts, uh, even to uh, be complicit in carrying out uh, sinful acts. Um, and we need to make sure um, that uh, we believers are uh, vigilant uh, in yielding our lives to God, uh, not only at the uh, very time of uh, conversion, um, but every uh, succeeding uh, day. We need to keep our minds uh, and hearts uh, on uh, Christ uh, Jesus. Uh, and if we believers uh, willingly uh, submit our bodies to the leading of God, uh, then, then of course we have assurance uh, that God has uh, um, his own purposes uh, for the life, uh, the new life that we are allowed to have uh, in Christ uh, Jesus. And then lastly, uh, Paul writes in the 14th uh, verse, uh, summing uh, it up for today, uh, for sin uh, shall not have dominion over you.
for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Uh, what we need to understand is that the uh, uh, the law, referring to the law of, uh, of Moses, um, uh, really just pointed out uh, what was, uh, in fact, uh, sin. Uh, and because uh, uh, certainly the law of Moses uh, was... Uh, uh, work based, um, we certainly uh, cannot work uh, for our uh, salvation uh, because of uh, uh, being in a, um, in, a sin, in a sinful uh, state. Uh, and so uh, we had to uh, accept that what Jesus uh, did for us on the cross uh, paid the, uh, the sin debt. Uh, that we owe God just from being born as a human uh, being. Uh, and certainly our freedom is always the outcome for believers uh, in Christ. And as such communicates just how far reaching it can impact touching both the community uh, and um, the individual. But we want to make sure to uh, sum up uh, the, today's lesson that we don't cheapen uh, what it was uh, Jesus uh, did uh, on the cross. Some people that believe because he was uh, God in the flesh that he didn't uh, really die, uh, but he was both God and uh, human at the same uh, time. Uh, and his humanity uh, certainly was extinguished uh, on that uh, Roman cross, taking upon uh, himself uh, all of the sins of uh, mankind um, that are uh, actually applied um, um, that freedom from sin is applied to us who believe that uh, that uh, atoning death uh, cleared a path if you will uh, based on his righteousness alone uh, that we can then enjoy a relationship uh, with uh, God uh, the Father and of course upon uh, us leaving uh, this world will ultimately uh, uh, live with, uh, with him and uh, reign uh, with Jesus. Um, and so we look forward uh, to uh, being with you on uh, next week. Uh, next week uh, being the day in which we honor uh, those uh, uh, who uh, took care of us uh, to a very, very large uh, degree, uh, our mothers. Even though uh, there were mothers uh, who did not give birth to those uh, that they took uh, care of, uh, anyone uh, who took care of you uh, is to be honored. Um, so certainly if you are uh, blessed to still have your uh, earthly mother uh, uh, with you, uh, honor her uh, by doing something good for her this week. Um, spend some time uh, with her. Tell her how much you love her. Tell her how much her sacrifice uh, and love has uh, meant to you. Because uh, certainly she is the uh, first teacher uh, that we uh, ever uh, had. Uh, those of us whose mothers have uh, gone on, uh, especially those of our mothers who have gone on to be with the Lord, uh, we should certainly uh, spend some time this week uh, thinking about them. Uh, and likewise, uh, doing those kinds of things that honor uh, her uh, memory. Uh, and so uh, next Sunday on Mother's Day, uh, if God should uh, uh, see us uh, through to another week, uh, our lesson will be entitled Freedom for the Future. Uh, continuing in the uh, great doctrinal book, uh, the Romans, uh, the eighth chapter, verses 18 to 30. Freedom for the future, Romans 8, uh, verses 18 uh, through 30. Uh, and so we ask uh, uh, that God would uh, watch over you this week and to keep you from all hurt, harm, and danger, uh, seen and uh, unseen. So certainly those of you who have yet to allow God to prevail upon you, your hearts and to make you part of his uh, great uh, family. Um, uh, we're praying uh, for you and uh, you need to um, uh, 
while you have yet breath in your body, uh, an opportunity to um, uh, live uh, free from uh, sin, the bondage of sin, uh, and that you can live uh, a life uh, free uh, with uh, uh, Christ Jesus and in uh, Christ Jesus uh, if you just submit yourselves uh, to uh, God. Uh, Apostle Peter uh, writes uh, uh, that God would, that no one should perish. Uh, some people feel as though that, that God sends uh, people uh, to uh, hell. No, uh, there are people that will uh, go there, uh, but God didn't create the hell for uh, human beings. It was for all the Satan and his fallen angels. Uh, but there will be human beings that will uh, go there because they have absolutely refused uh, the free gift of salvation that God uh, offers us uh, in Christ Jesus. Uh, and so, uh, as I say, if God uh, spares our lives uh, for another week, uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you uh, next uh, first uh, next Sunday next first uh, day of the week, I was about to uh, say. Uh, and so we ask God's blessing upon you that he would watch over you and uh, keep you in his care and show you favor. God bless you. Take care.